let's first of all talk about why we want to harden things in the home workshop. Mostly it's because we want a one-off tool, it's too expensive to buy it, we don't we we want it now we can't we don't want to wait to to order it um, it's a form tool something like this um, which is used as a for generating radiuses on the lathe um, these are taper reamers that are used for making um, uh, these drain cocks but the point is that they're usually for either one-offs or short runs and you don't really need anything terribly sophisticated to make them. All these were made with nothing more complicated than a, a small blow lamp or perhaps the next size blow lamp up which I've, I've got um, for the bigger things but generally speaking fairly simple to make. However, I've always thought that the process could be improved. I mean, one of the problems was, for example, um, with these taper reamers, when they get very thin, um, they distort quite easily. And banana shaped taper reamers are not a hell of a lot of use. So having established what we want to do, it's how we do it. And of course, one of the other reasons that we um, make tools out of easy to machine tool steel um, this is a bit of um, what we call it gauge plate in the UK or um, 01 tool steel uh, ground flat slot stock whatever but it machines very easily in its soft state in its annealed state and we can very easily create quite complex shapes if need be and then harden it but the point is that what we want to be able to do is we want the shape that we machine to be the final shape. So after hardening, we don't really want to be having to grind it, uh, simply, you know, touch up the edges and off we go. Now this leads immediately to a bit of a problem. Um, when I first started heating things uh, in the, um, the kiln or the furnace, conventional wisdom says that you should uh, bring the thing up to temperature, uh, it, yeah, equalize it, and then soak it at the uh, hardening temperature for one hour per inch of thickness. Now, that's great if you're making a lathe tool, because what actually happens is that, or what I've discovered happened, is that the thing is as hard as nails in the middle, um, but the outer layer decarbonizes and something like you know 20 thou the, the outer 20 thou is soft now that's fine with a lathe tool because you can grind it and you want it hard in the middle but a form tool that's no good at all because we've spent all this time carefully creating this shape and if we decarbonize the outer layer and we then got to grind it we've rather defeated the object of making a form tool Here's how I normally do it. It's very straightforward. This is a bit of silver steel, 8 inch diameter. It's been heated to cherry red, which equates to about 780, 800 degrees C. Hold it for a little while and then quench it into cold water. There we are, glass hard, the file won't touch it. Newly hardened, 
tool will be very, very hard, but not very tough. So the job is to temper it. And again, this is the way I've always done it, which is simply to clean the oxide off and then heat it until what's known as the colours run. So we are actually looking for a change in colour. Depending on what we use the tool for, there is a colour which corresponds to the right temperature and thus the right degree of hardness. And this here we've light straw at the top, dark at the bottom. Um, it's all a bit imprecise to be honest, but uh, it, it works. Yes, it's still hard. With tempering, there's always a trade-off between toughness and hardness. So on this curve here, it's uh, I think it starts at about 64 Rockwell, which is for something which is uh, not tempered at all. And coming down to uh, hardness of about 50, the three Rockwell uh, if it's tempered at 400 degrees uh, and it's a fairly gentle curve so it's it's not you know the temper tempering temperatures don't have to be that precise and can quite easily be achieved um, using the, the standard tempering colors so if we look at this we're going from a temperature of, I mean, this is probably 300 ish at this end and 200 is at this end and this is simply achieved by heating the, the base of the tool and watching the colours run up which is something that people have done for ages. And now for something a little more precise. Uh, so we have a couple of D bits uh, which have been machined pretty close to their finish size. Uh, heated for the required amount of time at the right temperature and then quenched and uh, tempered actually they were tempered in a domestic oven and this is one of them here just just being touched up on the grinder uh, very little needed to come off because most of the the, the hard work in the shaping had been done before the hardening process and uh, all that's needed after the grinding is just a gentle stoning to uh, refine the edge and it's ready for use Here's the D-bit in action. Um, I think the important thing to say here is that uh, high carbon steel is every bit as sharp, if not sharper, than high speed steel, uh, but it does anneal quite easily, so slightly slower speeds needed, plenty of cutting oil, and take your time. As you can see, this is cutting pretty well. This is a lathe tool made out of uh, ground flat stock O1 tool steel. Uh, this is uh, hardened but not ground. The shaping was done before hardening and here I'm just testing the hardness with a hardness testing file set and it's it's okay on the surface but it's um, only about 50 Rockwell uh, and interestingly after it being ground uh, it was around uh, 60 Rockwell. Um, as I said earlier, this is down to the decarbonisation of the surface. And here it is in action. And as you can see, it cuts absolutely fine. Now, ordinarily, I wouldn't bother making a knife tool um, out of a uh, gauge plate. I mean, you know, high speed's obviously the way to go. Um, the point here is, I'm just illustrating, is that you, you, they cut well. Um, it's what we used to use before high speed was readily available, um, and you can get a very good surface finish. What conclusions can be drawn by the process? Well, making something such as this, which is relatively thin, which requires only a small amount of time in the furnace 
um, really isn't a problem because there's no um, decarbonisation of the surface because uh, it only needs to be in there for five minutes. Same thing applies to small diameter uh, reamers, D bits, etc., uh, punches. Where there's some difficulty is with the larger sizes. I mean, for example, I tried to make a half inch D bit, soaked it for 30 minutes at the required temperature, and it was utterly useless because the outer 20 thou, 20 30 thou was soft. Um, and I don't have cylindrical grinding facilities, and even if I did, it seems pointless to take a piece of precision ground um, silver steel drill rod, harden it, and then have to grind it back into shape. Um, far better to machine it first, get it close to the finished dimension, and then just grind the cutting faces after the thing's been hardened. So the conclusion is that for most purposes you can do pretty much everything with a blowtorch. Um, having, if you're going to do a lot of hardening then having a, a kiln is a great idea, probably gives you more repeatable results but I have to say that I think it's a bit like playing golf and having your golf swing changed that it takes a lot of relearning. Um, I, I was obviously able to get the temperature fairly close by eye because I didn't have a problem with you know homemade D bits, reamers, form tools and things and only it became a problem when I started trying to do it and control the temperature more accurately. Well that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit the thumbs up button if you like it, uh, drop me a comment if you want to know some more. I'll see you next time.